Welcome to Faith Lutheran Mission Church. My name is Nick Hensler, pastor here at uh, the church. Good morning to everyone sitting in our pews. Good morning to everyone who is watching us online. A couple of announcements for today. First off, as you can see up on the screen here, Thanksgiving worship service on Thanksgiving Eve, the day before Thanksgiving, at uh, 7 p.m. So if you've got nothing going on that night, or even if you do have something going on that night, skip it. Come here instead. Because we're going to be worshiping the Lord, thanking Him, even through this crazy, chaotic, COVID craziness we've had this year, we're still giving thanks to God for the blessings He has given us, because He has blessed us with many, many things. So that's going to be an evening of Thanksgiving that, on that day. Um, if you've got friends coming, if you've got family coming, go ahead and bring them. We're going to, we're going to work out an extended seating, uh, not only up here, but up in our, the old choir loft and even downstairs as well. We can put all the uh, uh, service that we have here down on the big screen downstairs as well. So if you've got friends and you think that might hold you back from coming, nope, come on. We've got it covered here in this end. Still with the social distancing and masks and all that as well. So it will be a safe, thankful Thanksgiving Eve service. 7 p.m. on the 25th. Global Avenues Ministries, many of you um, remember Dewey and Carolyn Weatherby, who we support as a mission here at the church. And uh, they are having a couple of events going on here, uh, selling the wares that they do their mission work in India and Nepal. And as you know, everything that they sell for these women who make these things over in India and Nepal, 100% of these proceeds go right back to the women again. And they're having a couple of events. Uh, one is coming up at the Dallas Lutheran Church, and uh, that one's going to be on this no, Tuesday, Tuesday the 19th, from 3 to 8 p.m. up at Dallas Lutheran Church, up in Dallas. So, definitely be at that way, uh, take an hour's drive up to the northwest, uh, and uh, you can see all the words up there at Dallas Lutheran Church. If you'd rather go to west an hour or so, over to say to Oakdale, just across the border there, Oakdale, Minnesota, Dewey and Carolyn are actually having events all week long from the 4th up until November 10th. Wait. Yes, so we still got a couple days yet. <laughs> uh, and that would be running from like noon to 8 p.m. Got information downstairs on the bulletin board for the, the times, numbers for contact as such, and uh, go ahead and check that information out there. But if you want a really unusual gift from outside of the country, and at the same time, help out people, help out women who have been come out of human trafficking and abuse, they're double win-win. Plus, you, you really have an amazing handmade gift from India and Nepal. Information downstairs. Now, as we sneak closer to Christmas, we still are doing Operation Christmas Child for another couple of weeks yet. November 22nd is our last Sunday of collecting the boxes. And we still have some down there yet. We have 19 boxes already, which is amazing. Uh, thank you everyone who has put um, their boxes in already. And we still have some more available down there if you'd like to uh, go ahead and put a box together. Information is down there on how to pack a suit box. Also information in regards to the individual age groups that you can pick for filling those boxes. All that information is downstairs as well. Again, November 22nd, that Sunday is going to be the last Sunday of collection. That's all i got for now. We'll talk about some more Christmas stuff uh, in the Sundays to come. Kayla will bring us into the presence of the Lord with some music and then we'll go into our first time.
our opening hymn for today is God is here and he is here. We're here on the blue hymnal today, number 719. Please rise as you are able. We have 
have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, forgives us all of our sins. As a call to an ordained minister of Lutheran congregations and mission for Christ, and by God's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Our next hymn is Day by Day. One of my favorites out of this hymn uh, number 746.
That day will bring darkness, not light. In that day you will be like a man who runs from a lion, only to meet a bear. Escaping from the bear, he leans his hand against the wall in his house and is bitten by a snake. Yes, the day of the Lord will be dark and hopeless, without a ray of joy or hope. I hate all you show, your show and pretense, the hypocrisy of your religious festivals and solemn assemblies. I will not accept your burnt offerings and grain offerings. I won't even notice all your choice peace offerings. Away with your noisy hymns of praise. I will not listen to the music of your harps. Instead, I want to see a mighty flood of justice, an endless river of righteous living. Here is the reading. The psalm is Psalm 70. It's on page 247 of your green hymnal, hymnal, or if you care to follow along on the screen, I will read the odd verses if you would respond with the even, please. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and all altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Ah, and gloat over me turn back, because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, you do not tarry. The second lesson is from the fourth chapter of uh, what, 1 Thessalonians, verses 13 through 18. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. <coughs> First the believers who have died will raise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. Here is the reading. Please rise as you're able for the gospel. <laughs> When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I don't know you. You do not know the day or hour of my return. This is the gospel of 
gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. Now, our gospel text for today has Jesus telling us a parable that can be confusing to many people. So, so let me give you a bit of a background on this old Jewish tradition. Back in those days, once a groom has asked a bride to marry him and has received the consent of the parents, he would go over to the bride's house sometime during the early evening and escort her to a wedding banquet. <coughs> On the way to the wedding banquet, the bridesmaids would wait for the groom and bride to come and then escort them to the place of the festival with lamps in their hands. Now the bridesmaids would pick a point between the bride's house and the place of the festival and wait there until the procession of the groom and bride would pass. When the bride and groom arrived at that midway point, the bridesmaids would use their lamps like torches as part of the festive procession all the way to where the wedding banquet was being held. Now, this was a Jewish tradition that all of Jesus' listeners would have been very familiar with. Now, that's the context of the parable. The purpose of the parable is being prepared for the groom to come. The verses previous to the bridesmaid's parable in Matthew chapter 24, verse 24, in fact, all of chapter 24 has Jesus telling about when he returns to the world for the second time. Now, Jesus proclaims this in Matthew chapter 24, verses 42 through 44. So, you too must keep watch, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Understand this, if a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. You must also be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when you least expect it. So the first lesson Jesus is telling us from this parable is to be ready. And in our parable of the bridesmaids for this morning, we will see five who are ready and five who are not. Because being ready is a very good thing. Back in 1988, there was a photographer who was also a skydiver. He had jumped from a plane along with several other skydivers and filmed the group as they were individually diving out of the plane and then they opened their parachutes. As the video was being shown, you could see each member of the crew jumping out and then pulling their ripcord and uh, so that their person opened to the wind. On the video, you could see the final skydiver open his chute and then the picture suddenly goes berserk. What had happened was that the cameraman had fallen to his death, having jumped out of the plane without a parachute. And it, it wasn't until he reached for that ripcord that he realized he was free falling without a parachute. Up until that point, he was enjoying himself and was absorbed in what he was doing. But tragically, he was unprepared for the jump. It didn't matter how many times he had done it before or what skill he had. He couldn't borrow a parachute from someone else at this point. And he, and he couldn't go back to the place to retrieve it. He was not prepared or ready, and he had passed the point of no return. If there was one thing Jesus consistently and continually preached, it was that we need to be ready. Over and over again, we hear him say, just as he says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 44, you also must be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. Society today tends to live for today as though there is no tomorrow. 
And unfortunately, many people's finances reflect this attitude. Certainly, the lives of many Americans reflect this live for today lifestyle. Unfortunately, there are also many people who call themselves Christians that have this same attitude towards life. However, the truth is, being a Christian is much more than just calling yourself that. There was a guy who was leaving on a trip later that day and had forgotten to get his suit cleaned. Now, he remembered there was a store in town that had a sign which stated, one hour dry cleaners. So he drove over to the store to drop his suit off. After the clerk filled out the necessary information, he told her, I have some errands to run, but I'll be back in an hour to pick it up. And the clerk responded, I can't get this back to you until Thursday. But I thought you did dry cleaning in an hour, he said. Oh, no, she replied. That's just the name of the store. We don't actually do that. There's many folks today who wear a sign saying that they're Christian. However, they also fail to live up to what the sign really says. And there are many churches who do not deliver on what the sign out front of their building says either. In Jesus' parable, I think it's interesting that all the bridesmaids all appear to be alike. Anyone looking at the scene from the outside would see the same signs on all ten ladies that say, we're the bridesmaids. These girls all thought of themselves as bridesmaids who were acquainted with the groom. They all dressed alike. They all had lamps. And all ten of them were expecting and waiting for the bridegroom. And they all wanted to be a part of the wedding feast. However, not all of them were prepared. Some of them had failed to bring oil for their lamps. As unimaginable as that seems, almost as unimaginable as forgetting your parachute. Now this is a warning from Jesus in the parable. Jesus is saying that, that you need to be truly prepared because it's possible to look just like everyone else Talk like everyone else. Carry a Bible. Go to church. Have a desire to go to heaven. And even call yourself a Christian. And yet still not be ultimately prepared. You see, friends, a person can know about Jesus, but not actually know Jesus. A, a person can know the Bible but not really be living for the God of the Bible and doing what the Bible says. It's possible to, to look like everyone else and have your Christianity on the surface while never allowing the Bible to penetrate to who you are and change the way you live. In our parable for today, verse 5 says, When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. All of the bridesmaids fell asleep. And there's nothing wrong with that. Normal life all goes on while we wait for the bridegroom. When the verse is previous to our gospel text for today, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 through 39, When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. Those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. That is the way it will be when the Son of Man arrives. The important point we need to realize is that we should not be caught up in the routine of the world and forget that things are not always going to continue as the way they are. There will be a new day coming. 
Just as we proclaim every Sunday in the Apostles' Creed, He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Now, the bridesmaids in Jesus' parable were all living out the Jewish traditions as had been done many, many times before. Some of the bridesmaids slept the sleep of sloth and indifference. And the others slept a sleep of peace and security, knowing that they had prepared for the bridegroom's coming. Now it's not as if the unprepared bridesmaids did not know that they needed oil. They had just overlooked their responsibility and had ignored what they knew to be important. So the first lesson we need to learn from the Ten Bridesmaids parable is this. Don't fail to be prepared. Don't neglect to have oil in your lamp. Don't ignore what you know to be important. For the, for the closer it is to Jesus' return, the more important it is to be prepared. Now the second lesson of the parable is this. No one can do it for you. No one can wear a parachute in your place. And no one can loan you theirs. It doesn't work that way. You need your own. In Matthew chapter 25, verses 7 through 8, the unprepared bridesmaids saw that they did not have enough oil. And so they asked their wise and prepared friends to loan them some of theirs. However, that was not possible. Their supply was only enough for themselves. And that's what Jesus is telling us today. Another person's faith will not cover you. Just because you were brought up in a Christian home or you are in a church with other people of faith does not necessarily mean that you personally have that faith. God has no grandchildren only children. Every spiritual birth comes directly from Him. Your faith must be your own. Now it's good for us to sing faith of our fathers. However, it's also necessary to be able to sing blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. You may have a great Christian heritage. However, you need to make that heritage your own personal experience through baptism or a confession of faith in Jesus. Don't try to borrow someone else's oil. Be sure to have your own. And God is the dispenser of that oil of salvation. So you need to come to him while there is still time. Like the parachuting cameraman, don't let the moment of death be the thing that alerts you to your own spiritual poverty. Because you may be reaching for a ripcord that's not there. The third lesson Jesus wants for us to understand from this parable is that there is a time called too late. The experience of death is the great hope of the Christian and the great fear of the world. That also holds true for when Jesus returns again. Jesus viewed history as a line with a beginning and an end. Now today's contented and liberal church doesn't care for that view. Its members do not want to be reminded, even though they know it is true, that someday there will be a reckoning. And there won't be a tomorrow. In verse 11, the unprepared bridesmaids cried out for the door to be opened to them. However, their cries were incident sincere. For even though they said they wanted in, they never made any preparation to enter. Their preparation would have been the proof of their true desire. And yet, I think the most alarming words in this parable 
are in verse 10, where Jesus says, But while they were gone to buy oil, while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Friends, there will come a day when Jesus as the bridegroom will return for his bride, the church. Are you ready? The Bible encourages us with these words from the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. You must warn each other every day while it is still today, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. For we, if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. Folks, be ready. And don't forget your parachute. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your awesome promise that your son will one day return to bring all believers home. Help us, Lord, to spread the good news that is in your son Jesus so that all of our family and friends will be ready for that incredible party of a wedding feast that you will be having in heaven. And we pray this in the holy name of your son Jesus. Amen. Our next hymn is For the Fruit of All Creation, still working out of the blue hymnal yet, number 760. <laughs> He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy 
Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we pray that we are all here today, standing in our pews, watching us online, Lord, that our lamps are full with the oil of your salvation, Lord God. Nudge us. Nudge anybody out there whose uh, lamps are empty, Lord, that they need some oil. They can't get a parachute. We're on, the, we're on the way to ground, Lord. So I'm, I'm asking that anybody who is out there that's listening to this message as an empty lamp, Lord, I'm asking that you can touch them. Put some people around them that can remind them that, hey, hey, you, you got to do this now. You can't wait. You've got to do this now. So, Lord, we're asking that all of those people out there with the full lamps of oil, Lord, that they can help those people now who still have the ability to say and fill their lamps, Lord, and fill it with that oil of your salvation that is only through your Son, Jesus. Lord, hear our prayer. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, it's a difficult time for everybody right now. As, as we go through this, this COVID stuff and all the things that are happening within our society, Lord, we're praying for your peace that goes beyond all understanding. We pray for healing for all those who are touched by the virus, but, but touched by many of other things that are still killing people within this world, Lord. And so, Lord, we're asking for prayer. For those not only with COVID, but with the cancer and, and everything else, Lord. So we're asking you to come down now to, with your Jehovah Rapha to touch all of those people who are on our hearts and minds in need of your healing touch, whether that's in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we still, as a congregation, pray for this nation. Lord, we've, uh, we've voted as a nation and decided on who our nation as leaders are. Lord, and so they are our leaders. And we have to pray for them. We have to pray for their protection, for their safety, Lord. And we still have responsibilities as voters. We have responsibility to, to check those boxes, but we still have, we have responsibility as individuals to live out the call you have given each of us. During this time, Lord, we uh, are still a nation that we live under you, Lord. It's still in you that we trust, Lord, and we still are one nation under God. So we pray for this nation. We pray for those leaders who are in charge of this nation, <clears throat> new leaders, old leaders going on, Lord, and we pray for them from our president all the way down to our school boards and city councils, Lord, that they make their decisions in accordance with your will and not their own agendas. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all those soldiers who are on the front lines fighting for, for us, Lord, and all the freedoms that we have here. And so, Lord, we ask you to protect them. Keep them safe when they're out far away from family and friends, Lord. Bring them home, Lord, all of them. And then help us, remind us as a nation, we need to stand by them as they've stood by for us, helping them with healing, helping them transition back into society with jobs. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord God, we also pray for all those people right in our own communities here who are putting their lives on the line for us. Lord, it's law enforcement, fire department, ambulance personnel, even emergency room personnel at hospitals. Lord, we ask you to protect them on their shifts. Keep them safe. Remind us, Lord, every time we hear a siren, we need to pray for those responding officers and pray for the situation. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Last of all, God, we pray for all of those soldiers who are fighting in the front lines for your gospel. All those missionaries that we support individually and as a congregation, Father God, protect them, keep them safe, protect them from any kind of human evil, and protect them from any of the darts of Satan. Lord God, we also get you to protect them on their travels and please provide them with the resources they need to do those ministries you have called them to. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. If there's anyone who has any prayers that they'd like to make at this time, please go ahead and say them. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commit all for whom we pray, trusting in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Ask you that uh, from your grateful hearts that uh, you can deposit your offering in the basket back on the chair back there. We will not be uh, passing the, the basket during this COVID craziness as such. 
Anybody who's watching us online that would like to provide for our ministries here, uh, the address is on the screen there. Please send us anything you have from your grateful hearts. We promise we'll go to building God's kingdom here on this earth. Because it's a non-communion Sunday, we're going to be singing the Lord's Prayer. So as long as you're standing, let us sing with a joyful noise the words that our Lord Jesus has taught us.
serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.